What's up everybody? I'm Hoops and Hip Hop and it is time to cover facts about every single Hoenn Pokemon. If you're new to this series and haven't seen any of the previous videos, basically what I'm going to be doing here is sharing with you guys one distinct fact about every single Pokemon that was introduced in a given region. And today's region that we're going to be covering is the Hoenn region. Of course, Hoenn was introduced in the third generation of Pokemon games, and for these games, we saw the introduction of 135 brand new Pokemon, and yes, of course, I am going to be providing one distinct fact about every single one of them. Now, just like previous videos in this series, since there are so many Pokemon to cover here, I am going to be splitting this up into two parts. So in this video, I'm going to cover the first half of the Hoenn Dex, and in another video a week from today, I'm going to cover the second half of the Hoenn Dex. Still though, we've got 67 Pokemon to cover in this video, and there's a lot of interesting facts to be had, so let's go ahead and just get started. Starting things off with the sassy boy that is Trico, there have actually been some design documents for Trico that have been published online that show early beta designs for the Pokemon. In these designs, we see significant differences to Trico's final design, including a stripe across its belly and little leaf guards that are attached to its wrists. Speaking of those design aspects that didn't make it into Trico's final design, they just so happen to be exact design aspects that did make it into Grovile's design Trico's evolution. In Grovile's design, we see the leaf guards attached to its wrist, much like we see in the Trico beta, and we also see the stripe across the belly, much like we do in the Trico beta, showing that it's possible that they took these design elements and decided to include them in Grovile's evolution after scrapping them from Trico itself. For its fully evolved form Sceptile, Sceptile as well as its pre-evolutions are the only grass-type Pokemon that actually belong in the Dragon Egg group, which could actually explain why Mega Sceptile becomes a grass dragon type. The Firestarter Torchic holds the unique distinction of being the only starter Pokemon with a gender difference. However, this gender difference in and of itself is also unique because it's literally a one pixel difference from male to female. The female compared to the male has a tiny one pixel small mark on its backside that can only be seen through its back sprite. Ironically enough, Combusken was the first ever firefighting Pokemon that was ever introduced into the Pokedex. The reason why this is ironic, as I'm sure you probably already know, is because the firefighting type, especially amongst the starters, became excessively common ever since Combusken was introduced in Generation 3. For its fully evolved form Blaziken, we have a little bit of controversy, because if you remember a couple years ago when Pokémon Tournament was released on the Wii U, there was an outraged mother who publicly made a complaint to Nintendo saying that the game was inappropriate because Blaziken's quote-unquote genitals were shown in-game even though it was clearly just a hair tuft. I mean, you can't really stop crazy moms, I guess. For the water starter Mudkip, Mudkip is based on a variety of different amphibians, including the Axel Otl. What's interesting about this is that Mudkip's shiny form, being the bright pink color, is most likely based on the color of the Axel Otl itself, since many Axel Otls show up as a very pink color. Its evolution Marsh Stomp, as well as Swampert for that matter, are also the only starter Pokemon that have a quad weakness to another starter type, that being the Grass type. What's kind of funny about this, though, is that Swampert, as well as its pre-evolution Marsh Stomp, also have the fewest weaknesses of any starter Pokemon. Even though Poochyanna is an aggressive little Pokemon and attacks Professor Birch at the start of the game, it actually is one of the weakest dark Pokemon ever, having the lowest base HP, special attack, and base stat total of all dark-type Pokemon. Early artwork of Mighty Anna actually shows it with a black nose instead of a red nose that it received in the final version of its art and in the games. Back during the time of Ruby and Sapphire, a shiny Zigzagoon was actually distributed in order to fix a berry glitch that was in the games. This event was actually available for over three years before it was discontinued, which gives Zigzagoon the honor of having the longest running event that we have ever seen so far in Pokemon. Its evolution Linoon actually has a pretty funny Pokedex entry because in its Heart Gold and Soul Silver Dex entry, it states, When running in a straight line, it can easily top 60 miles per hour. It has a tough time with curved roads. Oh, Linoon, you poor baby. Even though Wurmple is a pretty standard, basic, and common Pokemon, it actually has the unique distinction of being the only Pokemon who has a branched evolution, whose branched evolutions evolve further after the initial branch. 
Silcoon, along with its counterpart Cascoon, actually has some interesting spikes, if you will, that poke out from its body as part of its design. With that being said, these Pokemon can be seen without these protrusions from their bodies in several games, including Pokemon X and Y, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and sometimes in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, even though this has never been specified as a distinct form for the Pokemon. Beautifly is seen as a counterpart in many ways to the classic Gen 1 butterfly Pokemon, Butterfree. This fact is actually stretched even further because in the anime, Mei's first Pokemon that she ever caught was a Wurmple that she also evolved into a Beautifly, and this was also her first Pokemon that she evolved and her first fully evolved Pokemon, all of which apply to Ash's Butterfree as well when he caught it as a Caterpie. Branching off into the other side of its evolution, Cascoon is the only Pokemon that appears in a friend safari in Pokemon X and Y that is not its own type, because it actually appears in the poison friend safari even though it is a pure bug type. However, with that being said, it does evolve into Dustox, who is a poison type, so I guess it's kind of okay. Dustox has the unique trait of being the only poison type Pokemon that evolves from a non-poison type. Therefore, if Cascoon is poisoned when it evolves, it will stay poisoned when it's a Dustox. This makes Dustox the only poison type capable of being poisoned outside of another poison type being hit by Salandit or Salazzle with a poison type attack. According to Lotad's Sapphire Dex entry, Lotad is said to have dwelled on land before. However, this Pokemon is thought to have returned to water because the leaf on its head grew large and heavy. It now lives by floating atop the water. Also according to the Pokedex, Lombre's entire body is covered by a slippery, slimy film. It feels horribly unpleasant to be touched by this Pokemon's hands. Lombre is often mistaken for a human child. Now, I don't know how intelligent the people of the Pokemon world are exactly, but how are you going to mistake a Lombre for a human baby? Its fully evolved form Ludicolo, as well as its pre-evolutions, are the only Pokemon capable of having the ability Rain Dish without it being its hidden ability. In CDOT's official artwork, as well as all of its sprites from Generation 4 onward, its cap, if you will, is a light gray color. However, in its sprite in Generation 3, the generation in which CDOT was introduced in the first place, its cap is a light green color. Its evolution Nuzleaf also has the great honor of being the partial inspiration for the naming of the now famous Nuzlocke Challenge. According to Shiftry's black and white Pokedex entry, by flapping its leafy fan, it can whip up gusts of 100 feet per second, aka roughly 68 miles per hour, that can level houses. So once again, we have another instance just like in the Johto region of Pokemon being capable of just completely decimating your house, so uh, be careful. According to Talos Fire Red and Leaf Green Pokedex entry, it dislikes cold seasons. They migrate to other lands in search of warmth, flying over 180 miles per day. Swallow as a Pokemon is based on the Barn Swallow and the Welcome Swallow. However, its shiny coloration being green, red, and white, along with its long tail feathers, is also possibly based on the resplendent Quetzal. According to the Pokedex, Wingle's favorite food is actually wishy-washy. Its Ultra Moon Dex entry states that it builds nests in cliffs by the sea. It circles the skies above the ocean looking for its favorite food, wishy-washy. According to Pelipper's Sun Dex entry, its spacious beak is large enough for a small child to fit right inside. Okay, uh, now parents, uh, even though this might be the case, I do not recommend sticking your child in Pelipper's beak. An interesting thing about Ralts is that all of its names across different languages are an anagram or an almost anagram of the word astral as an astral body. Each one of its names is just a slightly different anagram with the letters slightly rearranged. Curlia gets its name from the concept of Curlian photography. This is a special way of taking pictures that is supposedly able to show psychic auras and energy around the subjects that you're taking pictures of. Gardevoir most likely gets its name from the French spelling of the word guard as well as devoir, which is the French word for duty, referencing the way it protects its trainer. This very French inspiration for its name is also interesting considering that it received a mega evolution in Generation 6 when we had had a region based on France. Now when it comes to Surskit, I don't know if I'm going to be dating myself here or if I'm going to be speaking to the wrong audience, but Surskit bears a remarkable resemblance to the classic TV 
character Alfalfa, who was popular in the earlier 1900s. Its evolution, Masquerain, can actually also be seen as a counterpart to the Gen 7 Pokemon Araquanid. This is because they both share the bug type, and they have the exact same base stat totals, which we'll get into a little bit more later, and they can both be found in Molly Garden in Pokemon Sun and Moon, where Araquanid is found during the day and Masquerain is found during the night. When it comes to the base stat totals, however, the thing that gets really interesting is that even though they have the same exact base stat totals, before Generation 7, they did not originally. Because Masquerain actually got a 40 point boost to its base stat total in Generation specifically, which just so happened to bring it up to the exact same base stat total that Araquanid has itself. Now, you might be aware that Shroomish is based on a mushroom because, uh, well, that's pretty obvious. However, what you might not have noticed is that it could also be based on a dinosaur egg. This is because it's got a general rough egg-like shape, and its coloration and pattern almost exactly match that of a Pokemon egg, and its evolution, Breloom, also has characteristics of a dinosaur itself. Speaking of its evolution, Breloom, Breloom was the first grass fighting type Pokemon that was ever introduced, and it's a pretty good one too, because according to the Pokedex, its technique in fighting matches that of pro boxers. According to Slackoth's Sapphire Dex entry, Slackoth's heart beats just once a minute. Whatever happens, it is content to loaf around motionless. It is rare to see this Pokemon in motion. Now, while this does kind of sound appropriate for a sloth, actually it's kind of way slower and way more extreme than an actual sloth's heartbeat, because an actual sloth's heart will actually beat anywhere from 80 to 90 times a minute. Even though I don't really have any evidence to suggest that this was going to be an actual thing, when you think about it, Vigoroth would actually make much more sense as a branched evolution to Slackoth rather than a middle evolution between Slackoth and Slackeen. This is because Vigoroth is literally the exact opposite in every way to its other two evolutionary family members. This is because Vigoroth is a white color, while Slackoth and Slackeen are more of a darker brown color, and Vigoroth Vigoroth can literally never sit still according to the Pokedex, while meanwhile Slackoth and Slackeen literally all they do is sit still. On top of that, Vigoroth's ability is Vital Spirit, which doesn't allow it to be affected by sleep, while Slackoth specifically has been stated in the Pokedex to sleep 20 hours a day, and Slackeen has been stated as the laziest Pokemon once again according to the Pokedex. Like I said, I have no evidence that this was ever going to be an actual thing, I just thought it was fun to bring up that it just makes a lot of sense that they could be evolutionary counterparts because they're essentially the opposite of each other. Even though Slacking is a very offensive and very powerful Mon, I could see it as being the defensive version since it kind of loafs around and is big and fat and whatever, while Vigoroth could be the offensive Mon because it's very active and up and moves around a lot. Slacking itself also has several similarities to the legendary Pokemon Regigigas. They are both normal types, they both have abilities that hinder their performance, and they both have the highest attack stat of all normal type Pokemon, and they have the exact same base stat totals. Coming up next, Ninkata is the only Pokemon that is capable of evolving into two Pokemon at the same time, being capable of evolving into Ninjask and Shedinja respectively. Speaking of Ninjask, according to its Ruby Dex entry, Ninjask moves around at such a high speed that it cannot be seen, even while its crying can be clearly heard. For that reason, this Pokemon was long believed to be invisible. With Shedinja, Shedinja is a very unique Pokemon all around, from its evolution method, to its typing, to its ability, to the fact that it only has 1 HP. Speaking of its ability, its ability Wonder Guard, as you probably know, allows it to only be hit by moves that are super effective to the Pokemon. That being said, if the move Soak is ever used on Shedinja, that immediately makes it immune thanks to its Wonder Guard ability and its new typing of Pure Water to 16 of the 18 types making it almost invincible. According to Wishmer's Emerald Dex entry, its cries equal a jet plane in volume. It inhales through its ear canals. Because of this system, it can cry continually without having to catch its breath. 
According to Loudred's Ruby Dex entry, Loudred's bellowing can completely decimate a wood frame house. Once again, Pokemon, what is up with you guys and just destroying people's houses? Like, people are good, people help you, people are your friends, please don't destroy our property. Finishing off this evolution line with yet another interesting Pokedex entry, Exploud's Ruby Dex entry states that Exploud triggers earthquakes with the tremors it causes by bellowing. Makuhita actually gets its name from Makushita, which is the name of the third highest division in professional sumo wrestling. Believe it or not, its evolution Hariyama actually has a higher catch rate than its pre-evolution Makuhita. Azuril is known as the Polkadot Pokemon, which might seem a little bit odd right off the bat. However, that being said, Polkadots are known in Japan as Mizutama, which literally means water balls, which also explains Azuril's indirect relation to the water type. Now, you might know that Nosepass is based on a compass and an Easter Island head statue. However, what you might not know is that the reason why Nosepass's design focuses on the nose specifically is that it's also based on the magnetic ethmoid bone, which is a bone in between your nasal cavity and your brain that is said to give some birds their sense of direction. Moving on, Skitty is Pokemon number 300 in the Pokedex, and coincidentally enough, it actually has three points on three different parts of its body, having three points on its tail, and also having three points on both of its ears as well. An interesting thing about its evolution Delcaddy's design is that its whole collar thing that it's got going on right here is actually based on a neck pillow. Now, while this might seem kind of weird, it actually makes a lot of sense because Delcaddy evolves from Skitty with the use of a moonstone, which basically means, yeah, it likes to sleep, which is actually reflected in the Pokedex. If you look closely at Sableye, you'll notice that it has a ruby, a sapphire, and an emerald embedded into its body. This is a clear reference to the three games of the generation in which Sableye made its debut in. In the initial release of the English version of Pokemon Ruby, Mawile's name was actually misspelled in its Pokedex entry. However, this was fixed with the later release of the game. For our fact on Aeron, Aeron has actually had some use as a starter Pokemon, believe it or not, being Sapphire, aka May's starter Pokemon, in the Pokemon Adventures manga. Laron is based on the Bulgasari, which is a monster from Korean legend that eats iron. Its dragon-like appearance was also most likely inspired by the appearance of the Bulgasari in the film adaptation of this legend, a movie which was produced by none other than former North Korean dictator Kim Jong-il. Its evolution Agron is also the only dual-typed Pokemon that actually loses a type upon Mega Evolving. Metatite is actually one of the very few Pokemon that actually uses its female form in its official artwork. However, that being said, its artwork and the Pokemon as a whole was actually introduced before the concept of gender differences was introduced in Generation 4. According to Metacham's Black and White and Sapphire Pokedex entries, it gains the ability to see the aura of its opponents by honing its mind through starvation. This Pokemon is known to meditate for a whole month without eating. According to the Pokedex, Electric runs faster than the human eye can follow. Well, according to science and the internet, your eye is able to see roughly at a rate of 1 250th of a second, meaning that Electric, in order to move faster than the human eye can follow, would have to move in and out of your field of vision at a rate faster than 1 250th of a second, which is insanely ridiculously fast. Now, some of you might be aware of this one if you follow the anime closely, but in the Kalos region, Manectric is actually the Pokemon of choice for Officer Jenny, since their other Pokemon of choice, Growlithe and Hurtier, are not native to the Kalos region. Moving on to Plusle, Plusle's Japanese name is Prasel, which, even though that's basically a Japanese pronunciation of its English name, is also very close in spelling to the word praise, which coincides with its species name, the cheering Pokemon, perfectly. Its counterpart Minin also first appeared in the anime in episode 312, which also happens to be its Pokedex number. 
Speaking of counterpart Pokemon, we actually have some very interesting facts about Volbeat and Elomise. Now, you might be aware of the fact that these two Pokemon are based on Fireflies, considering they're literally the Firefly Pokemon. However, what you might not know is that Volbeat in particular is actually also partially based on a Greaser. If you look at its design, it's got a very Greaser sort of getup, which is an amazing inspiration for this Pokemon to have, and also personally makes me appreciate it and like it a heck of a lot more. On top of that, it's also also interesting that Volbeat is the Firefly Pokemon, it gets part of its name from Volt meaning electric, but it is neither part electric or fire type. And just like its counterpart Volbeat, Ilumise is also based on another 20th century American fashion style, that being the Flapper, which was a 1920s women's fashion style specifically, which once again just really makes me personally appreciate these Pokemon a heck of a lot more. When it comes to Roselia, Roselia is the only Pokemon to receive both a pre-evolution and an evolution in the same generation. With Gulpin, even though Gulpin is the stomach Pokemon, it is very clearly based on the gallbladder, not only given its shape, but also given its distinct green color, which is the exact same color as the gallbladder. Uh, gross. With Swalot, we actually have a very, very interesting fact, believe it or not, because Swalot is actually the online mascot of Satoshi Yamamoto, who is the main illustrator for the Pokemon Adventures manga, and has been ever since Volume 10. Even though Carvana comes off as an aggressive and tough Pokemon, it's actually tied with several Pokemon, including that of Magikarp, Igglybuff, and Caterpie, for the lowest special defense stat of any Pokemon. Carvana also has the lowest base defense stat of all Dark-type Pokemon. And for the final fact of this video, we're going to be covering Sharpedo. Now, the interesting thing about Sharpedo is that it was likely originally planned for Generation 2. We know this because in the Gold and Silver beta demo, there was a Pokemon that was cut from the final game that bears a striking resemblance to Sharpedo, both being Shark Pokemon and both having the exact same body type, with the only real difference being that this beta Pokemon has an anchor attached to the back of it, where Sharpedo doesn't. And there we have it, everybody. That was the first half of one fact about every single Hoenn Pokemon. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video because I really have enjoyed covering facts about every single Pokemon. It's been a blast so far, and I'm really glad that you guys are enjoying what has now become an actual series. If you guys enjoyed this video, though, be sure to give it a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and tell me another fact that you might know about these Pokemon that I didn't mention. Also, I just want to remind you really quick that part two to this video will come out a week from today. Today, so next Saturday, so definitely subscribe and stay tuned for that if you haven't already. Speaking of subscribing, I upload Pokemon content every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so it definitely won't be a boring or an unexciting time around here, and definitely hit the notification bell so you can be notified as soon as I go live on Tuesday, which is when the next video is going to come out. I also want to ask you guys to go follow me on Spotify because I really think you guys would enjoy my Spotify because it's full of Pokemon remixes and I really, really want to grow that just as big as I possibly can. And go follow my Twitter as well and enter my Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee giveaway because we only have a couple more days left to enter for that and all you got to do is follow me and like and retweet the contest tweet to enter. With all that being said though, like I said, I'll be back on Tuesday for another video so be sure to hit that notification bell if you haven't already. And as always, until then, I love you guys and I will smell you guys later.